So we're at UK Glass Seals in Gloucester where the owner and managing director Peter Woods is talking to UK leader Gerald Batten about how um, his business will be affected by Brexit, uh, a business that's very unique in this country to do with the export of Elvers. Peter, how do you think Brexit will affect your business? Well, unfortunately, we can only trade within the EU. But the real positive thing is that once we're out of, Brex out of the EU, we will become a, we'll become a third-party country and we, we should really have the benefits of trading all over the globe like we used to do 20 years ago. So you'll be able to use markets in other countries where eels are eaten, like the Far East and so on. I mean, you're selling elvers for it to be farmed, grown into adult eels to be consumed, and the markets are in Northern Europe. Countries in Northern Europe, like Belarus, White, White Russia, which are not actually in the European Union, you can't currently trade with. And obviously countries such as China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea and so on in the Far East. Uh, you, 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 what you're saying is you'll be able to deal with those much more populated countries if we leave the EU. Yeah, I mean, it would be marvellous to be able to, to, uh, to trade with Belarusia. It's, um, you know, it's a country which is really suited to our, to our recovery plan with the translocation of the, of the glass seals from, uh, from an area of plenty to, uh, to an area where there is no, <coughs> no eels and, and really virgin habitat there. And then on the, on, on the consumption side, we, we will be able to sell to Asia for farming. And that, that's, a, that's a really valuable market that we've, we've lost. And you're repopulating these countries. The, the, the River, River Seven fishery affects three constituencies, doesn't it? Gloucester, the Forest of Dean and Tewkesbury. And you're, it's a very rich area for elvers and eels. And you're repopulating countries such as Belarusia, for example. Yes, I mean, the, the, the unique funnel shape of the, of the Bristol Channel means that we have a, an exceptionally large recruitment of glass eels here and, and then we can translocate these to all sorts of areas or we were, were able to or maybe we still are able to to, to uh, new places for these eels to live in, in Europe which could be in Holland or Sweden I mean we have, we have over the years shipped 30 million of these little eels to, uh, to Sweden for their recovery plan. But at the moment you're only allowed to trade within the EU because of EU legislation effectively. So your business, as I understand it, you've got about 300 fishermen um, relying on some level of their income from your business and about 10 people in the office here and in France as well, basically. That's yes, that's, that's absolutely right. And of course, you know, the supply of, of, of baby eels here is a, is a finite resource. You know, we have competition from the French uh, and we really want to make the best of this resource. I mean, uh, we, yeah, we, we and have a, a real opportunity to, to sell at a, a good price outside the European Union. OK, so that would be Brexit would be positive for you, particularly as I understand the French government are subsidising their own producers, which the British government's not doing. So you, you're up against unfair competition at the moment, basically. Oh, yeah. I mean, apart, apart from the, the official support the French government give to the, the French fishermen, of course, <coughs> they, their season is much earlier than, than us, so they, they get the, bite, the first bite of the cherry. So uh, by, by this time of the year, most of the market has been filled by, by the French producers. So um, we've got Gerard Batten, who's the leader of UKIP, has come down to Gloucester to meet Peter and see how a, a family-run business that's been here since the late 1960s, that's turned over up, upwards of almost £10 million per annum, provided a lot of employment, a lot of income generated in the local community, is affected basically by unnecessary EU red tape and um, unfair application uh, of rules by the French government in particular, um, and obviously opportunities that would be in Eastern Europe, outside the EU, in Russia and Belarus, and also in the Far East. Jared, what do you, what, what's your feelings having come down here today? Well, I've learnt more about eels and elvers in the last half an hour than in my entire life. <laughs> Uh, it's fascinating. I didn't realise they all came from the Sargasso Sea and they all come up rivers around the world. It's incredible. And of course, what this is a fantastic story about entrepreneurism, uh, of a small businessman who makes a big business and it could get bigger if it wasn't for EU regulation. Because this is, a, as Peter's explained it to me today, an example of where we could, uh, where this business could have a much bigger market outside of the EU but currently cannot export outside it. Um, and of course they're being held back by this regulation which of course we see every month coming through the European Parliament in all kinds of different industries and areas. Uh, so when we leave this is going to be a big success story 
for people like Peter who can look to the wider world, which is what UKIP's been talking about for the last 25 years. We, are not, it's, we don't want to stop trading with the EU. We want to be able to trade with the rest of the world. And of course, there's another side to this story, of course, which is why would the EU not want to buy Peter's eels once we leave? I mean, they're, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face. You know, at the moment, he can only trade within the EU. If we left, he can only trade outside the EU. Or why wouldn't the EU want to buy, want to buy his product? So uh, we, they have no flexibility in their regulations. This is the big problem. They're not designed for people. They are imposed upon people. And as soon as we leave, people like Peter, real entrepreneurs, people who really understand how to make a, a small business into a big one, are going to get a massive boost from Brexit. Well, that would be amazing. I mean, I think the, the fact that the EU is so dogmatic is very disappointing. And I understand, actually, that uh, Peter has been quite modest. That most of the eels consumed in the UK and in Europe originate from the River Severn and, and come through your premises, I think, I've heard, Peter. Most, most of the production from the, from the UK, or nearly all the production from the UK, comes through, through, our, through our business. So this is really a British success story, basically, and a local success story, and con continuing a cultural tradition on the River Severn and in Gloucestershire that um, has been around here for hundreds of years, isn't it? Well, I mean, this, this, this fishing goes back since time immemorial. I mean, it, it, is, you know, it is a very important part of our local, local culture and history. And of course, this is... This is a hand net fishery. This is this is not some industrial fishery like you you have in in France. I mean, these artisan fisheries need to be treated completely different from from uh, these places where they're they're 12, 12 meter boats, you know, using a huge amount of diesel, producing lots of CO2, huge carbon footprint. I mean, the sort of thing we're doing here is. Uh, no, it's, it's very environmentally friendly. And it spreads a lot of money into the local economy, and I don't think we should forget that, because I know shops in Gloucester and the Forest of Dean and Tewkesbury and so on, they have extra income, people have extra income in families that they otherwise wouldn't have had. So anyway, we're going to ask one of your fishermen, uh, Dave, to have a little bit of a chat with us as well, if that's okay. But thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to speak to Dave, who's uh, one of the elder fishermen. Dave's family for several generations were elder fishermen on the River Severn. He's from Gloucester. His sons, in turn, and no doubt, in due to course, your grandchildren, your grandsons will be elder fishermen. So, very much part of your family, and um, you've grown up with elder fishery. Um, maybe just give us a little bit of the background, the cultural side of it. What you know, you, the bits you told you were saying earlier about selling, selling it elvers locally and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, when um, when Dad and I used to do it, um, there wasn't a side where there was buying them live, they were buying them dead. So there was a food source then. So. Um, if you, if you went out and caught elvers, then outside your house you'd have a chair with a pint mug on it and a tea towel over it. So all the locals would walk around and they'd say, well, they've got elvers for sale up the road. So they'd come up and buy them. So it would be elvers for sale and it was a local industry. Yeah, yeah. But now what's happened is, of course, the elvers are being exported to be grown in foreign countries in the Far East or in continental Europe. Um, and, and also in top restaurants in London, I believe, the elvers actually come, the eels that come from you know, the West End and restaurants and so on, the eels come from, from here on the River Severn, so that must make you feel quite, quite proud. Yeah, very proud. It's, um, you know, like they say, you can't keep on stealing from the future. Um, you've got to look after these fish and uh, look after the fishery. They can't get into all these ditches and dikes now because of the barriers, so, you know, if they're left in the river, they're going to die because they're a food source. You know, all the other fish, duck, everything, predators, predators eat them. Yeah. So they're trapped in there, so get them out, set a few for eating or whatever, um, restock in other countries, yeah, let's get them out and then get them back in quantity. And so for you and your family and for your, 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 the, the other guys that fish with you, I understand about 300 here on the River yeah. Severn, that's all extra income into their families that otherwise wouldn't be there from this artisan fishery on the River Severn? Yeah, years ago it was pin money, so you go out, catch a few, few hours and then you can go down the pub and play your skittles and whatever. Then it became a bit more money in it. So people using it for holidays and stuff like that. So, and then just if somebody wanted a, a new fence or a new television, you know, it, it was money extra, extra, extra income. So obviously you're aware Gerard's the leader of UKIP, which is a party that's campaigned very heavily to uh, have Britain leave the European Union um, and campaigned here in Gloucester as well and in the Forest of Dean and in Tewkesbury. Um, I think, um, as I understand from the owner of UK Glass Eels here, um, the markets um, in, in, in Eastern Europe, uh, outside the EU and the Far East are threatened by our continued membership of the European Union. So 
what's your feeling obviously vis-a-vis -vis Brexit? Yeah, I, I think we need to, um, it's all about saving the eel, so why have these fish here when we can't do nothing with them? You know, let's get them out into these other countries. And the EU red tape stopping you selling them? And might stop this business, it might mean this business is not able to continue and certainly not able to grow. Yeah, as a business and as a tradition, you know. Yeah. Um, if the money's not there, you know, it's not an easy job. You're out all in the middle of the night, three, four weathers. in the morning, all weathers. Um, so it's getting less and less fishermen. So if there was a bit more injection in money, so we could sell these other countries, you'd get more fishermen coming yeah. in again and start, you know, getting the fish. And countries like Belarus and the Far East you're not able to sell to because no, of, no. they're not in the EU. Okay, so Jared, obviously you're the leader of UKIP. I think it's um, interesting for you to speak to Dave and, and, and find out how that's affecting and it's interesting for you to say about the cultural tradition, the tradition, and the income. There's sort of two sides to it. Uh, some of your thoughts? Well, uh, what I'm in f fascinated with this aspect of it as well is where it's a boost to the local economy. So people like Dave are able to earn extra money, which they presumably wouldn't be able to do in their new current employment. Not all jobs offer overtime or whatever. So you're able to earn extra money. And if we leave the EU and Peter can expand his business, then people like Dave and his sons and grandsons can actually go out and earn more money. And this is where what, what we forget in these when we're talking about EU negotiations, etc. Most people don't work for a big business. Big business likes the EU because it can lobby and deal with one load of regulation and one regulatory authority. But only about 10 to 14 percent of the economy is actually concerned with exporting to the EU. Um, you know, 80 odd, 90 percent of the economy is purely domestic, or well, about 80 percent because that's, we also export to the rest of the world. But 80 percent of the economy is purely domestic. It's only concerned with business within the UK. And most people actually work for a small or medium sized business. They don't work for a big corporate company. So this is where we've got to boost jobs. Because what's very important as well, probably not in this particular instance, but most youngsters set off, start off in their working career by getting a job for a small company like I did nearly 50 years ago. And if I hadn't have had that leg up on the employment ladder, I might not have ended up working for a big company as I did much later on. So this is very important that we get youngsters in. One of the tragedies of the current situation is how difficult it is for young kids to actually get a job um, where they can earn a decent amount of money and then start off on their career. When we've had people who've gone to universities, can't find a job and still unemployed in their 20s, that, that's a tragedy because it's come so much harder for those kids to actually get on the employment ladder. So this is a, a fantastic, interesting story we've heard today. And I'm sure you could mirror this around the economy if the mass media stopped concentrating on what the big businesses are saying and actually went and talked to some of the small and medium sized businesses, I think they get a different perspective on Brexit. And I think it's very, very interesting, isn't it? The, um, Peter Woods, the manager director, was saying about how the fishery here on the River Severn is an artisan fishery, that's how he described it, which is basically uh, hand nets and all that kind of thing, whereas in France and other countries it's much more where the fish are scooped out of the river. And it's like that in, a, in the deep sea fishing as well, fishery as well, isn't it? Spanish factory trawlers come up and scoop everything out of the sea, whereas on the east coast and down in Devon and Cornwall, in Brixham and Newlyn and so on, of course, it's very much more individual owner, trawler skippers or whatever, who've handed it down from father to son. So I think that's a, you know, that's a very, very interesting point. And, and the other thing you were saying about um, the majority of fishermen, they work full time in any case. So a little bit of extra money, the money's not there at the moment, so they, they're saying, I've got to get up in the morning, you know, don't want to get up being tired and risk losing my job. But if there's, there's a little bit more money, other people will come in and it'll just boost the old lot again and get it going again. I, I think that's key and, and, and when you see how many millions of pounds are generated from these tiny little elvers um, and as you say it's a food resource isn't it? Yeah. Years ago people would fish them because they couldn't afford to buy their own food so let's continue that British tradition and let's protect it. Thank you very much Dave. Thank you Gerard. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.